Okay. This is where it all falls apart. This is where rules of thumb go out the window. It gets very difficult, and it takes years of working with these things sometimes to really get on top of things. So don't feel bad if you get lost after three or four of these things. Shires are the elliptical and cross section. Um, no barbels. They've got, again, larger scales, so fewer than 65 in the lateral series. They're often silvery, hence the name shiners. Some have lateral stripes, some have caudal spots. We're going to use that here and there to our advantage. Um, what's what's, what's uh, um, important to remember is that half of them are rare. Half of them, almost literally half of them have stats. They're either threatened, endangered, um, or special concern. One of them has been extirpated, so maybe two, depending on who you ask. So you're only dealing with, out of a list of about 20, you're only dealing with 10. And then there, you're going to only see um, them pop up in key habitats. So it's going to be rare that you're going to have six or seven of these things in one place. If you do, it's going to be someplace like the Plover River, the Tamar River, a sort of cool to warm water, mid-sized stream where you've got you've got headwater species mixing with with, um, with river species, or larger river species. Many of you, when you you know, if you get a job doing serious identification for for IBI projects, I strongly urge you to not wing it in the field. There's a lot of a lot of um, dots and spots on those those maps that John Lyons put together that I think are spurious and would, would need to be checked out because I think we've got to be very careful about our, about our identification. So, like, you know, you brought the, the killifish to me last summer. That, that's what that's what that's what people like me are here for. That's a good thing. So, um, you you may find yourself if you find yourself in a place with that's, that's rich in shiners, you know, kill a few, bring them back to the lab, check them out. Things like anal fin ray counts and dorsal fin ray counts under a microscope with little dissecting tools pulling things apart can definitively help you um, identify those things. It could be the difference too in having you know something that's endangered recognized or not, which is very significant, uh, especially for lake owners and, and stream owners um, that you're you know maybe inevitably working for, whether it's in the private sector or for the DNR. Okay, so the common shiners, there's a, there's a group of, say, 10 or so that I'll spend some time on. I probably won't spend any time on the rare ones. So we're coming up on time anyways. Right? Golden shiner, everybody knows golden shiner, I hope. This was, and I, I meant to put a picture of this on, on here. But this was the one that I stumped somebody with the John Lyons app. Below about two inches, these guys have a big, broad, dark gray stripe down their side. Any questions? No. Thank you. And you'll see them in lakes all over the place. Why? Because this is, you know, ice fishing bait um, central. So golden shiners can, can, be, uh, can be difficult, and I think the jars that we have show small ones as well as large ones. The key, key to uh, the golden shiner they get really large. They get bigger than this even, and I get them on a fly all the time when I'm, when I'm um, after sunfish and things in the lakes around here. Big, beautiful <coughs> stuff. Uh, large adults can have bright orange, almost red fins, but all of them, whether they're small or large, have a very dipping lateral line. I don't know if you can see the, the dipping lateral line in there. And they all have a keel, a sort of cartilaginous ridge between the pectoral, I'm sorry, between the pelvic fins and the anus. So there is a, there's a distinct ridge there. The, the lateral line and that ridge are key for golden shiners. Relatively few shiners have very pointed fins as well. So that's something that, that will stand out to you, even if it's a small specimen in a bucket full of mixed shiners. So they're all over the place. Lakes as well as, as, as um, flowing waters. Common shiners only flowing water. You have an expert in common shiners right here. Literally, Richard knows more about common shiners than most people in the state. I'm not saying that lightly either. How many are you on? 8,000 measured? Or, um, yeah. So Richard is going to be an expert in common shiners. Um, the 
genus Lugulus characteristically has deciduous scales. It also has a very deep head, so it's a broad head. It's kind of a, a triangular shaped um, face, hefty kind of shoulders to it. But the, the deciduous scales are very important. You're hardly ever going to see its congener, which is endangered in the state, the striped shiner, unless you, unless you live south of here, south, south of Wisconsin. Um, so mark my words, if, you know, if you've got a, a, a bucket full of mixed shiners and you see spots in the silveriness, they're nice and silver with, with, with almost, they look like pigment. That's just the lack of shininess. It's not a dark spot. Uh, that's a common shiner. And it stands out even at super tiny, tiny size in life. He'll attest to the fact that it hardly works at all when they're preserved. <laughs> but uh, it's a very important character. So having, having those gaps in the shininess, the, the deciduous scales will get you the common shiner. This is a breeding male, isn't it? That's a beautiful fish. I love those guys. Spotfin shiners tend to be found in bigger rivers um, historically. But they've been introduced in lakes, like you go to Sunset Lake, you know, where Suez is, loaded with, loaded with spotfin shiners. The reason why they're called spotfin shiners is they have pigment patches here. They're particularly hefty on these three windows between the, the fin rays. Um, most of the, t of the year they're going to look like that. That's a breeding male. Everything in Cypronella has a dark wedge right there. And that preserves well. So when we've got thousands of them in a tray up, upstairs, that's how I pick them out to start with. And most of the time up here, they're going to be um, spots in China. And some of these, some of these locations are UWSP locations as well. They're, they're sort of spreading up the Wisconsin River. Um, one of the forage fish that, if you want to fish the Wisconsin River, that you should emulate. Fairly large critter. Spots in China. The next two, big mouth shiner and sand shiner, are almost always occurring together. They like flowing water, they like medium sized um, streams, not so much a headwater species. Both of them have what, what I call a punctate lateral line. They have little equal signs that go down their lateral line. The big mouth shiner happens to have a big mouth and has a very characteristic, yeah, go figure, huh? has a very characteristic head shape and then it's sort of got a flat, surface here. This is the thing that, these are the two that drive tail and crazy. So I got to show you the characteristic there. They have different um, anal fin rays. I think, um, oh, I can't remember. They had a cheat sheet. Um, one of them has seven. Yeah, the sand shiner has seven and the, the, uh, the uh, big mouth shiner has eight. So if you have a whole bunch that are preserved, you can look at them, look at them under the scope and pick them apart. Mm -hmm. So watch if I flip back and forth here. They're going to look pretty similar with the punctate lateral line. Oops, I guess I have the slide reverse there. But look at the head shape. That's just sort of an average kind of mouth. It's not, it's not completely drawn out. It's not big. It doesn't have a flat surface to its, to its chin, whereas that one does. There's another characteristic about the mid-dorsal stripe. There's a mid-dorsal stripe down the back of both of these critters, it sort of ends at the dorsal fin with the sand shiner. It continues, oops, it continues around the dorsal fin on the big mouth shiner. So that's something else that you can use to help you there. So Necropus dorsalis versus Strominius. Clover River, loaded with them. Both of them, right next to each other, lots of them. Tomorrow River, not so much, but the Clover just full of them. I don't know why there aren't more dots. Probably because we, you know, we're always sampling that area where the docks are. You go to Iverson Park, and just basically what you get is sand shiners, big mouth shiners, with, with a few other things thrown in. Okay, these we can be proud of as people from the Upper Midwest. Lots of glacial lakes, alongside blunt nose minnows, alongside juvenile golden shiners that have heavy stripes. You've got the black chin shiner and the black nose shiner. Lakes, mainly Which lakes. Like. Here and there in flowing waters, but mainly lakes. Black nose shiner has 
very characteristic backward pointing crescent shaped marks. So I'm, you know, I'm sorting through a whole bunch of minnows and shiners. I'm going to see that right away. It's fairly easy. I, I think I've rubbed off on you enough that you can see those now, right? With the, uh, this is not the best slide, but these guys have a hefty zigzag that goes down their lateral stripes. And the, the way that the flash went off on this picture, it doesn't show it quite well. Uh, but both of those you'll find in lakes. Relatively few lakes have both species, which is cool. Uh, so like in Portage County, Lake Emily has both species. And in Marathon County, Mission Lake has both species. Let's see, we're almost to the end of the common ones. Emerald Shiner and Rosy Face Shiner. Look at the silver non-breeding version. So I flip back and forth. Very similar. Few Shiners have pelvic fins that are out in front of the dorsal fin. These two both do. Few shiners have anal fins with nine or more rays. Both of these do. But look at the snout. Emerald shiners have a, a, a snout that's shorter than their eye diameter, and rosy face shiners have a longer snout. It's, it's an eye diameter width or longer. Of course, they occur together a lot. In flowing waters, Clover River is loaded with them. That footbridge at Jordan Park has breeding aggregations of these things, bright blue, bright, bright red, beautiful fish. And only a couple more. Spot tail shiner is crazy common now in the Stevens Point area in the Wisconsin River. This map doesn't do it justice. I gotta send a lot of data to John Lyons. But these guys can get fairly large. They have a single caudal spot that's as big as their pupil. And if you want to, you know, emulate bait fish in the Wisconsin River to catch predators, right? If you guys are anglers, you, can, you can't lose by emulating the spot tail shiner. Soft plastic minnow things, minnow baits. Uh, the river shiner is not fun at all. Large, no characteristic really. It looks a lot like the Mississippi silvery minnow. You catch them right alongside each other. It has a bigger eye than the Mississippi silver minnow, and it has a different anal ray count. Um, it can get really big, uh, but you know, again, you're not gonna you're not gonna see it around here much unless you spend a lot of time on big rivers. And then, last but not least, this is my I always like to close on this one: the mimic shiner. <laughs> Another one of those things that just ugh, what is that? You get you get you know you get okay at doing shiners and minnows and all that stuff. You get through the cooler of fish at the end of the seining run, and you end up with these things. If you go to Iverson Park on the Clover River, you'll end up with 10 or 15 of those out of a seine full of a few hundred fish. And they literally are mimicking everything. They, they look very, very different. I almost always bring them back to the lab to make sure they're not something else. Um, and then I, I lump them in this group called the Necropolis Volucellus as a mimic shiner. That's what Rabick did his master's work on. And that's Lots needs to be done on this. This, this, this alongside channel shiners is probably 50 species or something crazy like that. We just don't know enough about it. Okay, so those are the common ones. We still have 10 minutes. I went over by five. Do you want to see the other rare ones then? Really below your mind? Pug nose minnow is actually named a minnow, but it looks more like shiners. Pug nose shiner. <laughs> The Ozark minnow, the weed shiner, uh, the striped shiner is only found in a few places. The red fin shiner is, I don't know, was more common than it is now. And then here's the channel shiner, which looks just like the mimic shiner. Ghost shiner, hardly found anywhere, and pallet shiner. So lots of rare shiners that all look fairly similar. So if you see stuff that, that looks like this, you can't ID it, um, don't worry about killing a few, bring them back to make sure that you've got the right designation because you want to get your species counts right and you want to know if you have rare and endangered things. So thank you, enjoy. I'll see you in ichthyology if I haven't seen you already.